Hey, welcome to Pat Soundbites IGTV. Keeping new music alive is what I do on the radio and now on video. Conducting live chats with the artists and learning the story behind their latest release and also playing their new video. Special thanks today to my sponsor, GoGo Tuners. For all guitar players looking for a focus on ease of use, readability, durability, and accuracy, look no further. The GoGo Tuner is the choice of many touring professionals and a favorite of casual players. GoGo's signature green you in and red you out screen makes tuning quick and easy. For more information, go to the website at gogotuners.com. Special thanks to WBXO Classic Rock Radio Redefined, allowing me to keep new music alive on the radio airways on the Pat Show every Sunday from 5 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. Only on WBXO Classic Rock Redefined. And a big thank you to Mr. Evan Balzer for allowing me to use his amazing instrumental that you're hearing right now. It's called Trails. To find out more incredible music by Evan, go to his website at evanbalzer.com. My special guest today, well, she's a singer, she's a songwriter, and she's an amazing guitarist. I'm talking Miss Nikki Stringfield. She rocks with the all-female band, The Iron Maidens. She rocks with the band Heaven Below, and she also rocks this killer EP she released back in October 2019. How about Harmonies for the Haunted? I've been playing When the Devil Comes Down, Haunted, and Straight Through the Heart. We're going to talk to Nikki about her career, playing in all these rockin' bands. We're going to talk about this killer EP. We're going to play the video When the Devil Comes Down, and a whole lot more right here on Pat Soundbites. IGTV. Hey, live on Pat Soundbites IGTV. We're rocking in New York, keeping new music alive on the radio and on video. And look at this babe here with the arms, rocking it out all the time on YouTube. Check her out. I've been dying to track her down. The wonderful, she's a She's an incredible singer, songwriter. Forget the guitar work. She's getting there. I mean, if she's not there already, I'm going to try to put her on the map even better in New York. And if you listen to my show, The Pat Show on WBXO on Sundays, you'll know that I play Nikki's Stringfield, Stringfield yeah. on The Pat Show, especially with her latest um, Harmonies for the Haunted, which is great. Miss Nikki, you look beautiful. Thank you for your time today. So stoked to be here. Thanks for having me. No, it's great. So let me just start. How are you, Patrick, Rolo, Lucy, Luna? How is everybody in the family dealing with the uh, dealing with COVID? You guys okay? Yeah. Well, the animals love it because we're home all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. They're going. Who are these people? Don't they gotta leave? <laughs> yeah, like they're usually gone. I usually get the place to myself. The cats. You know, the cats love chilling. Rolo goes and stays with our friend, at, you know. So animals love it. We're going a little stir crazy. We're dying to get back on the road. You know, we're we're usually out all the time. But we're making the most of it, you know, keeping no. busy at home, working on new music, trying to just make content, get get the music out there. Absolutely. When we first started this lockdown, I know a lot of artists – we're hesitant. Usually, as you know, you put yep. something out and you promote it. You're live on the tour. And then it's like, are yep. we doing the right thing? Are we not doing it? And I'm the new music guy and I'm happy that you've done it. Keep putting stuff out there because you know what? People are so home now and they're looking for something new. So when you do get on the road and in your third song into the set and you go, now, this is a new one. Don't go to the bathroom and get a beer because you've already heard it for the last year. <laughs> exactly. And then hopefully they stay in their seats or they stand up and keep going rocking out for you. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Some of my favorite bands, they flat out said they don't, they're not going to put out new music in this quarantine because they can't, can't tour on it. But at the same time, I know, you know, we're starving for new music. 
we can't wait to get back on the road. But at the same time, I know people are dying to go to concerts. You know, people are craving live music, new music. So exactly. We were hesitant at first and we're like, you know, we put out our the Heaven Below album Rest in Pieces last summer. My album came out shortly before COVID hit. But yeah, I mean, music is what is keeping us sane. And I know that's the same for a lot of other people. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you're, you're out there and, and keep working at it and, and doing a terrific job. As Nikki said, Haunted uh, Harmonies for the Haunted released in October 30th in 2019. Or was it last year, Nikki? Yeah, it was 2019. I'm so off on my days anymore. Like days, years. Yeah, 2019. You and me both. Yes. Five song <laughs> EP. And yes. we're going to play uh, When the Devil Comes Down at the end of our chat, so don't go anywhere. It's uh, got over 11,000 views, and we wanted to get to 100,000 views. Ooh. So after our chat, you're going to see that. And you've listened, to, you've heard it on our rotation. And uh, I love it all. I mean, good for you. Um, I got so many questions here in a, in a pile of notes. But let me just start off, Nikki. Um, how did you know music was your calling? What was it? Did mom, dad, musically inclined? Um, brother, sister, what was it that attracted you and said, yeah, I mean, you're a, a young lady. I know it wasn't the Beatles in 1964 watching the Ed Sullivan show as many artists that I interview go, I remember that. And I knew I wanted to do that. What was it for you, Nikki? Oh man. Yeah. I missed all that good stuff. You know, no, no, you did. It's all good. <laughs> um, yeah. Both my parents were into music. I'm an only child. Um, I was born in 90, so I missed a lot of the 80s music, but that's what my parents were both into. And my dad played guitar. He was in a band. So I was constantly around music, around rock, around metal. Um, I'm from Texas, but a lot of my family wasn't really into country. So pretty much just raised on kind of rock, metal. And uh, I, I don't know, I loved singing when I was little, but uh, I wanted to play guitar like my dad. So he got me a guitar. I started playing when I was 14 and my mom would always take me to all the concerts and everything. So she was right there with me discovering uh, new music. And so it was, it just kind of, I just kind of knew, I knew in my, in my soul, my heart, and my soul that I just wanted to do that. Did you play in like a high school choir or, you know, grab the violin and all that bit growing up? No, I, I did take a choir class and it, it wasn't really my thing. I did it mainly to, to be in there with my best friend. Um, so uh, unfortunately, I could have learned some music theory there, but I kind of didn't. Oh, um, that's all right. I was never in band. Uh, I was when I was in high school a lot, I was more into drawing. Well, that's kind of when guitar started taking over. So I was into drawing more first. It was more into art. So that's kind of what I was known for. I was voted uh most artistic in my senior class because everybody would always see me drawing um, not for music funny enough uh, but music started taking over um, yeah I didn't really do anything um, I didn't play out in high school I was just sitting in my room practicing all the time there's the key word practice and hard yeah. work pays uh, University of Texas graduate radio and tv and film were you going to yeah. be the anchor of uh, Austin, Texas, uh, doing the six o'clock news? Or were you going to be on uh, behind the microphone thinking that, hey, you know, let me uh, be the DJ or Cinderella, Spinderella? Or what were you thinking? What, what draw you to uh, um, radio, TV, and film as a major? Well, I was wanting to do music. Um, uh, at first, I was... I actually went to University of Texas in Arlington to talk to the professor there that would have been head of the music department. And they're like, well, you can play. Like I played for them. They're like, you can play, but you're going to be so far behind in music theory, so far behind everybody that they basically told me, you're not going to have a life and you're going to be miserable. And I was like, oh, I don't want that. Oh, I like no. to have concerts. So no, that's not for me. So I was like, I can play. I don't, I, don't, I learn everything by ear. So I was like, well, what can I do? Really, I want to move to Los Angeles um, for the cliche, you know, move to L.A., play music. And I didn't have anybody to play with in, in my hometown of Red Oak. It's tiny. There's really I had a couple of musician friends, but I didn't jam with anybody. So I decided to move to Austin and go to University of Texas because it's the live music capital of the world. 
but I didn't have anybody to jam with there either. So I thought radio, TV, and film would be kind of the closest thing to what I love. I love movies too, and I love the production aspect of everything. So, you know, I kind of thought that would be the stepping stone to what I did want to do, uh, which was just play music. It was the closest thing to it at that point. So I knew that there was an internship in that program that if I got into it in my senior year, I could move to Los Angeles through that program on my senior year and get an internship and hopefully stay out here. And that's kind of, and it all worked out somehow. Wow, man, that is great. What a great story. And a lot of people, you know, you got to take the risk and I'm sure you were going, I know this is what I want to do. Do I want to leave mom and dad home, but um, they're doing well. I got to do this. And, you know, yeah. everybody goes, you know, they have that deer in the headlights. I'll be in LA looking around going, all right, I found an apartment. I don't know anybody here, you yeah. know, except for your internship. And yeah. um, how did, um, I know your guitar company or not your guitar company, but Sh I'm, and I'm not going to say it wrong. Schechter, there was yeah. a time, right? Did I say it right? There yeah. was something to do with Schechter. And then that really opened the doors for a lot. And you got your, we'll talk about your signature, signature guitar in a minute, but that kind of opened the doors for everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you said, I didn't know anybody. I was kind of the, I was like the kind of quiet, you know, goth girl that would always sit in my room and play. Um, so I had been uploading videos to YouTube of me playing and everything. And so through my internship, I went to the NAM music festival and yep. I met, kind of at Schechter there and I made friends with them hung out with them every day and that's kind of how I made all of my connections um got over my fear of just you know just kind of being the shy I was like you can't be shy you know you got to get out there and, and do it so I met everybody and then they sent me home with a few guitars and let me choose one of them and then uh they offered me a job as a receptionist there to kind of help me stay because I, I was there. My internship was like five, six months. So I was finishing college, doing the internship, and I joined the Iron Maidens and my other band, my original band at the time, Before the Morning. So I, my world was crazy. So it, it luckily it kept me so busy that, you know, I missed home so much because I'm super close to my family. But at the same time, it just I just kind of jumped into the fire and went. Yeah, good things happen to good people boy yeah. timing and being at that desk i'm sure there's other musicians that come in and go and who are you and what are you doing and we're yeah. looking for somebody and how did the iron maidens come along i mean you knew one of the girls that she come in and say hey we're looking for a guitarist or they put an ad up in the store or... yeah, it was another one of those things where it just all kind of fell to like fell together um so i had met I, forget, I think I met them at NAMM, a couple of the guys in the band that I joined before the morning. And through them, they were good friends with Courtney and Nita, the two guitar players at the time. So I, we all, you know, just everybody, it's so crazy because it's, it is such a small world here. Like kind of everybody knows everybody kind of thing. And I kind of got thrown into that world of, of all these musicians. And um, so I was just hanging out with them one night. And at the time, the Dave Murray position that I jumped into was kind of a revolving door. It had two two guitar players at the time, Nita Strauss and Neely Brosh, and they were kind of rotating and taking turns playing um, playing the shows. So they kind of threw me into that too, because they both had their own solo kind of stuff going on. So I just they were like, "Oh, you want to come play this this show with us?" It's like, sure. I love Iron Maiden. I grew up on that. So. Yeah, just I started playing shows and it just kind of turned into a full time thing. Uh, and again, hard work pays, right? You mentioned, you know, I maybe it works out really good down in Red Oaks where you're from that there was nothing to gravitate to that forced you in the room and just learn by ear and play, play, play. And, you know, you took the risk, you went to LA. And timing and networking, as you said, everybody seems to know everybody out there. Hey, I need a, I need somebody to do a riff, and oh yeah, I got somebody, and boom, you know, it's like a done deal. It's crazy. I was wanting to go to Nam so bad, and then no Nam show. I'm like maybe I want to go to Nashville, but then they said Nashville's nice, but it's not Anaheim, where you get to see everybody. But I, it's on my to do list. It'll happen. I'll get out there. Oh, you have. Well, that's so a great much. story. Um, 
What, what's your favorite uh, Maiden song to play? You know, it, it changes, honestly, depending on the set list. Like, I like to, if we've been playing, we change our set list a lot. Um, so if we've been playing a certain song for so long that I'm like, oh, you know, I can't wait to play a different song. Right. But overall, I love Power Slave and I love uh, Clairvoyant. I love oh, Dave. Yeah. That one, very, it's, it's a lot of fun to play. So probably those two, a couple of my favorites. They, like I said, they change over time. Or if we usually learn a new song and put that in, that's my new favorite because it's something yeah. new. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it is the money maker, right? It, it's your bread, your meat and potatoes, and the, your band. You guys do a great job, and, and it's a show. It's it's a performance, and it's a show. It's not like, I mean, if anybody's never seen Iron Maiden, the band, oh my goodness! Yeah. So you guys have big shoes to fill, and you do an outstanding job. But as I ask other artists that are in other bands like that, it could get complacent. And you're like, okay, are we coming out with a new album? Can we do something? Yeah. And then you say, okay, I got, I got to, I just got to do it. And I'm sure the other girls do it as well. Everybody, everybody does it. You have to, because you want to try something different. Right. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, that's why I was like, I have to do my own music. I have to keep busy doing other stuff. Because while I do love Iron Maiden, you know, it's, I got to, I got to take it elsewhere. Right. There's, yeah. there's, there's something inside going, no, I got to, I want, I got to do my, I want to try it, at least try it. And strangely enough, you know, we, I kind of research and really prepare and, you know, everybody relates to you as a, an amazing guitarist, but nobody really talks about the singer in you. And, yeah, that's you know, <laughs> it's like, it's, you're starting to really, get out there and, and I know you're working on that skill and it shows, I mean, it's great. I'm like, wow. So good for you. I, I love it. Right, so talk to me about these five. Well, we, we can even talk about um, at chaos consumes. Um, where do you find the inspiration from? Uh, obviously life lessons, you know, broken relationships like everybody else or yeah. things that come to your mind. Does it start with the lyric? Does it start with an, a guitar riff? How does how does songwriting process work for you, Nikki? Um, well, it's kind of different for each one. I guess for As Chaos Consumes, that was really my first song that I had written ever. Um, so that, I think I was watching The Walking Dead or something. And so I had to <laughs> think apocalyptic thing in my mind I'm like I'm just gonna start writing these lyrics and then I think that the lyrics came in my head first for that song and the chorus melody and I kind of heard that and then I wrote the rest of the song around it um like it's usually I hear the chorus in the melody and the lyrics first so that's that kind of right there took away me wanting to do instrumental music I'm like I always hear vocals I always hear you know I always get the lyrics and stuff going in my head and it usually falls in place around that Sometimes I'll hear a riff first. Like, I think when the devil comes down, I heard that I was sitting on a plane getting ready to take off. And I just heard this all in my head. And I'm like, I just started writing it all down on my phone. I heard the riff. I heard everything. And then wow. when I, where I went, I'm like, give me a guitar. I got to get this out of my head right now. And so that whole song was written on a, in my head on a plane. It was, you know, pretty crazy. So yeah, I, I think straight through the heart kind of came from me watching Vikings. A lot of stuff comes from TV or, or movies that I'm watching, or like you said, any kind of relationships usually pour right. out. Really, well, so. things that you know you want things that uh, that are um, you know fresh in your mind, part of your yeah. life growing up. That you know, take me unbroken, haunted. You know, wherever it goes, it goes. But uh, um, no, I think it's great that you even did an EP. I mean, sometimes. Less and simple is easier than pulling your hair out going, all right, Patrick, we need another five more songs. Not that you don't have it. Yeah. But maybe let me go at it smaller, easy, get my name out there and, and see where we go. Was that the thought for the most part? Pretty much, because I was still unsure with the singing. You know, I... You Patrick, got it. Come on. <laughs> you got it. I don't want to. You know, that's at the same time, I think I just kind of started playing with Heaven Below and so I went to my friend Jesse and he was producing the album with me. I had written everything except for kind of drums. I had programmed out some really rough drums because obviously I can't play drums. Um, I wish I could. So he helped me do the drums. We 
got all the songs together. Patrick produced my vocals and really made me act feel comfortable. And for the first time, I'm like, okay, I feel confident singing. I've always wanted to do it and I always thought I could, but outside of karaoke, like some drunk karaoke with my family. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> I've never been told like, God, you can, you're a good singer only a couple times. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it and put it out there and see what people think. Do five songs. I don't want to keep waiting anymore along with, you know, we're on the road a lot, you know, trying to get three people's schedules together to get this thing going was hard enough with people on tour, people being busy doing other projects. So I was like, five songs is enough. Let's just get this out, see how it goes. Good for and now, you. So, and, and we want a, I want a Nikki's, well, you, you and Patrick are going to do double do, triple duty, baby. Nikki opens up and then it's Heaven Below and then it's Lita Ford. That yeah. would be incredible. Right? Wouldn't it? You're God. there. You got Pat. He's playing with Lita. It just, and then you could top it off with an Alice Cooper. I mean, I was looking forward to Lita, uh, Tesla, my man uh, Frank Hannon, and all those guys. And I know the Alice Cooper gang really well. And Nita, Nita Strauss, Hurricane Nita Strauss. Um, yeah. Yeah, those guys. That would be it. Yeah, it would be cool to bundle you guys up with uh, with somebody. I got my Judith Priest uh, Glenn uh, Pilsen shirt on. For, um, I bought the shirt to support his uh, Parkinson's uh, Foundation. So uh, love, uh, love, love, love Judith Priest. So that's cool. I want to ask you about the, you know, like I said, most people, they think of you, they think guitar. When you get yeah. into a riff, Nikki, is a, are you thinking scales? Are you thinking emotion? You just let it go? What do you think? Are you worried about, well, I, maybe I should, I missed the note here. Or you just let the fingers and the brain take over and just let the emotion come out. Yeah, it was like uh, we were just saying earlier, we were going over one of my songs, Divine Intervention for Acoustic, and there's that little riff. It's like, once you start thinking about it, that's when it all goes wrong. Because I can play it, and the minute I start thinking about it, done. So, yeah, I try to take the thinking out of it. Because once you start overthinking, your mind just gets going. And, then, and it, yeah, it, it's usually like the first or second take. That's it. Stop, stop. Because yeah. the more you start massaging, there's a point, I guess, that you can take a song, and then you overdo it, and then you lose the whole the whole yeah. thing about it. So cool. Yeah. I like that. Tell, describe me your tone. What's your, how would you describe your tone, your fingers, your tone that comes out of that Schecter guitar? Well, I use a Kemper too. So that that's magical. You know, you have like every tone imaginable with that. Um, for my tone, for the maiden stuff, I try to get pretty close to Murray, but also, I like to keep a bit of myself in it. You know, I, I like a lot of heavier music. So it's really a blend of kind of heavy with kind of the 80s metal. Um, yeah, I use a, well, actually my new signature Schecter has a, has a new, I was using Seymour Duncan's in all of my stuff, but now I'm using the Schecter made pickups and they kind of made one for me based off of an invader, which I was using. And I use a Sustainiac all the time. Okay. The, yeah, that's so much fun. Oh yeah. I'm not a I'm not a musician or a guitar player. I should be. I should try. In fact, everybody that tells me Fender and Gibson have sold out of guitars during the whole COVID, which is yeah. a great I I love to hear that that there's a new generation of people taking advantage of this time and really yeah. taking taking advantage of the music, which is um great. Uh, what was I just talking about? Uh, tone guitar. Yeah, a lot of my fans are asking, um, you know, can you add ask more gear questions? So that's where I'm oh. coming from, you know. So tell me about this signature guitar. Is it available? Can somebody buy one? Yeah. I mean, what were you thinking? Were you pinching yourself going, really? I, I got a signature guitar? Like me? You yeah, want like, me? What? What? <laughs> Talk about dream come true since I was 14, you know? <laughs> I mean, I was like, Are you, really? Yeah, this is actually, I'm on my second one. So I've got cool. to visit. Congratulations. Thank you. I know. I was like, I get to do, do another one? Really? Um, I was like, I don't know how you top the first one. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they kind of, you know, came at me with that. First, they kind of, they were like, let's just make you a guitar. So I was like, okay. 
and they already knew what I liked a lot. So they kind of designed one for me and it was, I, they just asked, you know, what color do you want? I said, green. So they kind of made me one. And I think a lot of people liked that one. So after that, they're like, all right, let's make a signature model. So, you know, I love the edgier body shape. So I went with an Avenger. I went with a reverse headstock to make things difficult. My uh, tour manager hates me because that's a pain to tune fast. So, you know, <laughs> I look awesome. Um, I, it's my new guitar versus my old one has a thinner body because my shoulders are pretty small in that guitar. We, it, my first one was pretty heavy. So I'd be walking off the stage like, oh my God, my shoulder. Um, so this one, the new one's a little bit lighter. Hi, Rollo's trying to talk too. Nice. Uh, yeah. I use a. All right. New York loves Lola, Rollo. I don't know what he's whining about. Um, so, yeah, it was all pretty much based off of the guitar that they had made me in the beginning, except this one, my newest one, has a new pickup, the Sustainiac. Um, I use JHS strings. Um, like I said, this guitar is a lot thinner. It's got a very slim neck with a uh, satin finish on the back. So good for shredding. It's got glow in the dark inlays. Come here. And carbon fiber binding. Wow. It was really a dream come true to have that done. That and is... I kind of out the fretboard, of course. I was like, I want it to be kind of girly, but not that girly because I'm a tomboy. And I wanted guys to still be able to want to play my guitar. And where, then, can, where can our where can your fans and our listeners go and check one out and buy one? Oh, SchefterGuitars.com. Okay, makes sense. Okay, yeah. cool. And both of them are there. I believe the first one has been discontinued, so that the second one is up now. Okay, I, got I, you. I believe they might have some. You might be able to still get the the first one's red, the second one's purple. Um, you might be able to get the red one somewhere still, but I'm I think some. A couple of people have ordered them in the purple one. It's the purple one now. Who so. who are your influences when you look when you think of guitar players? I mean, obviously we just, today's Eddie Van Halen's birthday, and we lost the great Eddie Van Halen. We just lost Leslie West not too long ago. Who were you? Uh, who do you go like? Wow, like I want to I want to jam with him or her, dead or alive. That's what I would love to been able to do or do. <laughs> Well, I'll throw this one out there that I always get a lot of crap for. Kurt Cobain, because he got me into playing guitar. He's not a great, crazy shredder, which I, you know, I love to, to shred whatever. But his songwriting and his passion, all of that to me was, you it know, helped. as important to me. Um, so he was probably my number one that got me really into playing. Um, Sinister Gates of Avenged Sevenfold would probably be number two. Um, really got me into shredding. City of Evil came out when I was, I think, maybe 14, 15. And so to hear a new band like that doing a just kind of shredding all over the album with all the dueling guitars and harmonies really inspired me to be like, I now I want to shred. Now I want to do that. Um, Dimebag Daryl, of course. I'm from Dallas, so around Dallas. So I love, I grew up loving Pantera. Um, there are so many great guitar shredders from Texas. Yes. Oh my goodness, Stevie Ray and Billy Gibbons, and I get to I got to hang out with Eric Johnson not too long ago, and uh, I mean the list goes on and on. I'm like, I don't know what's in the water. Johnny Winter. I'm like, it's just it's Texas and guitar slingers. Like, wow. I got. I want to get down to um. What's the place? Ant Antoine's. Am I saying it right? I don't know. It's, it's like that? a blues place. It's a blues rocking place. I want to say Billy always tells me about it. Antoine's. I don't know oh. if it's in Austin or in Dallas or it might be in yeah. Houston because that's where Billy's uh, from. Hmm. So, uh, do, we, do we have a follow up to uh, Harmonies of uh, Harmonies uh, for the Haunted? I'm working on a full length. Yes. So the full length is coming. Hopefully. You singing, you playing the instruments, you doing. Yep, I'll probably, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to maybe have some friends come and do some stuff on this album too, maybe some solos and maybe have Patrick on there, you know, maybe do like a, have him sing some too. Change things up again a bit because I wanted, for the first one, I wanted to be able to prove myself and kind of be like, I did everything on this album except for drums. 
played bass, played everything. It was 100% me. And so now with this one, I'm like, all right, now let's have some fun with it and, and see what we can do. Bring so in you look back and said, I did it. And I, you feel good about it. And the reviews are going good. And uh, you got this crazy guy in New York finally catching up to everything going. We're playing it. We love it. And uh, yeah, now it's time to try something different and uh, really let it all go out, which uh, I'm looking forward to that. You mentioned Mr. Patrick. We got to talk about uh, Heaven Below. I mean, rest in pieces. Um, the follow up yes. to uh, Goodbye Apopolis. I mean, a tribute to the departed. As I said to you before I hit the record button, I guess goosebumps listening to Lincoln Park's uh, Crawling. To whoever came up with the idea with the piano and uh, we will rock you. That's, I love, I mean, look, these are great, great songs, but when people make it a little bit different and put their own love and style into it, that's what makes it. I mean, that's like going to a live show. I don't want to hear the exact album. I want right. to hear, you know, I want to feel the energy and feel the emotion and hear something different. And, uh, Patrick and you and and, and your band uh, really hit it out of the water with that one. And I'm you know I'm I'm kind of disappointed um it hasn't gotten it really hasn't taken off um it, it really should have just went I want I want to say viral but it, it really should have taken off and hit the charts and did more than I think it did for but you know new music again I don't know I I don't get it anymore get it out there everybody's oversaturated on the internet's a great thing because yeah you can put everything out but at the same time it's everybody else too you know well i think the, you know we're living in a visual world anymore so you get it you're putting the videos out with the songs whether it's a lyric a, a, a lyric video or whatever because the yeah. video can go viral and then boom you know like it'd be right. crazy yeah and it's great to Absolutely. see that you and Patrick are doing these other videos. They like keep yourself relevant, playing music, getting out there. It's cool to see you guys. It's uh, awesome. What's on your bucket list? What do you do? Uh, what are your outside interests and hobbies? Tell us about the Nikki's string field that uh, we don't know about. Besides your wonderful dog and two cats and that guy you hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> I love to travel. I love traveling. It Man, I would love, probably my ultimate bucket list would be Egypt. I'm fascinated, very fascinated with history. And man, to go see Egypt would be, a, that's my all time, man, if I could do that, I could die happy. Um, I would love, I've never been to Rome, pretty much anywhere that is historical like that. I would love to just travel and go see. Um, There's so many see. festivals out there too that... I can see you guys in the the, the maidens uh, playing out there easily, even with even with heaven below with Patrick. He, I mean, it just drives me crazy of all the festivals out in Europe and then here in the states. It's like, you know, everybody I talk to, oh my god, it's a hundred thousand people three days in a row, and then you come to the states and you're lucky to get, you know, maybe eighteen, ten smaller venues. Yeah, we, we were actually, the Maidens, we were, last year, you know, we go to Europe pretty often, like once or twice a year, and we were supposed to go and actually play quite a few festivals last summer, and of course, that didn't happen, so hopefully, you know, hopefully that's still on the books, you know, we, we had started, what did we do? We played one, and I can't remember what it is right now, we played one in Germany, and that was really cool, with Queensryche, and uh, Battle Beast and some other really cool bands. Um, can't think of what it's called right now, but we were supposed to do a lot of them, and so we were all so stoked on that. You know, getting to well, play Vox. Yeah, I, I saw a date for Poughkeepsie, New York, in September. Knock on wood in 2021, so mm. we could we could meet you and hang out with you. And I got to tell you, I do the dice game. I wanted to do something more than just to play the new tracks. So I'm cutting yes. right on my writing tractor and this light bulb clicks on and I go to the dice game. So I meet you before or after a show and you roll five dice. And if you roll a five uh -huh. of a kind totaling in three rolls, I play your entire yep. EP or album on my radio show. 
and Alice awesome. Cooper, Billy Gibbons, Judith Priest, Uriah Heep, Three Doors Down, Cheap Trick, Night Ranger. Everybody wants to Paul Rogers. Everybody wants to roll the dice. I didn't think I'd become the dice guy, but whatever works. And we and I videotape it, and it's so funny. Give me the dice. We gotta, you know, I gotta do this. I got a sixteen track live album. I want you to play, and I don't care if they get it or not. I'm gonna play. I I would play your EP, your whole EP, numerous times just to promote it and get it out there. But I've been doing it for two and a half years. And Jesse Triplett, the lead guitarist for the band Collective Soul, huh? he did. He had two fours. His second roll, he got nothing. And the third roll, he got three fours. And uh, it was in June in New Jersey. You thought we won the Super Bowl, the World Series. We're jumping up and down. It was crazy, just insane. And I played their new album called Blood, which I love. Uh, two yeah. weeks later, and we videotaped it. Then I got to meet the band down in Long Island, and I made a shadow box for like a gold record for Jesse as being the first one to hit Pat's five for it all. So we got to have you rolling the dice in Poughkeepsie. Oh, yes, it'd be, it'd be really cool. Oh, God, that'd be a lot of fun. Oh, I'm I'm so down. That's like Yahtzee, right? I get very yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. let's do it. So. Where can our fans buy um, Haunted? And your, I know there's bundles out there, and I don't know. I was on yeah. your website the other day, and it said the T-shirts are all sold out. What do we What do we need to do to get a Nikki T-shirt and a CD and a guitar pick? Go to your website at Nikki-Springfield.com. Yeah. Uh, I need to double check on that because I got a lot of shirts sitting right here and they're not. Well, if out. you go, so this is what I'm telling you. If you go and click yeah. on the bundle, because I was going to buy a bundle, it says t shirts mm -hmm. are sold out. Okay. But I need if you go out to buy a t shirt, I think they are available. So you might want to oh. just check that out. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up on that. Hmm. Um, yeah. I've got, I've got guitar pick packs. I've got several shirts. The bundle has kind of everything a CD, a poster little little extra things guitar picks um yeah you can get it all on nikki-stringfield.com and uh you can listen to it you can download or just stream it basically anywhere like spotify apple music amazon music it's it's everywhere you listen so. to my podcast and then you track on to her tracks She's you on go. YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. She's on Facebook. She's on Instagram. You can follow the dog. You can follow Patrick. You can follow Heaven Below. Support these great, great, hardworking musicians. Nikki, I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I have, that I haven't driven, dri driving, driven you crazy. <laughs> Not at all. Enjoyed it. Cool. Well, it's time to rock a little Nikki's. I can't be in spring. Spring string field, <laughs> string I know field on the Pat show with a little when the devil comes down right here on Pat's IGTV.